Okay, now it's being recorded. And now I also want to see your faces. So I don't know how I'm going to do that. Okay. So, Ayan, how are you? And okay. how are you? I'm good too. Javeria, Khatija, Mamin, Ali, Ahmad, Yaya. All right, some people are not here. I don't know why. But anyway, let's start now. Huh? So, The thing is that um, for example, if something is connected, okay, so different masses are connected with like a string or they're physically connected just being together like that. So what you guys should understand is that there's a way to solve this and we're going to learn this step by step so you can follow this along on your PDF as well. So the first thing you guys should always understand is that step one is always that you should find the acceleration of the whole system. And the reason we want to do that is because when something is connected, obviously they're going to move at the same acceleration together. Um, sir, this is dynamic speed F2. Yes. No, this is for PDF one, and then we're going to switch to that. Okay. okay. This is the last bit of PDF two. Okay. Okay. So what's going to happen is that uh, when you want to find the total acceleration. The only formula is obviously F equals to MA. The interesting thing about it is you want to find the resultant force. Right now on the right, we have 8,000. So I'm going to write 8,000 minus, and on the left, we have 900. And same goes for 800, 700. So we're going to keep on subtracting those which are against this. This would find us F. And then what you're going to do is you're going to add the total mass. So total mass will be 14 M and it's 5 M that's 4 M and that's 2 M. Okay. And then we want to find the acceleration as well. By the way, I just want to tell you when you do that, um, you would realize that this whole thing is going to be something probably, I don't know, probably, 8,000 um, and let me prolong the calculator. I never physically did it. So 8,000 minus 900 minus 800 and then minus 700 minus 600. So it's going to be 5,000 as the resultant force. And then all the masses, we're going to add 14 plus 5 plus 4 plus 2. Uh-oh. And that's going to be 25M times A. So in this question, which I forgot to write, mass was like 500 kgs. So we can say that it's going to be then 5,000 equals to 25. We're going to put 500 into the mass in acceleration. Now... It's going to be 5,000 divided by 25 times 500. So the acceleration we're getting right now is 0 0.40 meters per second square. So this means this is the acceleration of the whole system that we are looking at. All right. Is it clear? Yeah. OK. Khadija, can you please tell your friends to join this link? Probably they don't know, right? The link changed, right? Okay. Now, so then what you're going to do is, in step two, you want to cut the object you want to find forces on. For example, in this system, if I cut it from here, so obviously in cable one, there's going to be tension T1 and tension T1 like this, right? So 
if I cut it from here and redraw this, so if I redraw this, you should understand that this is the object you're looking at right now. And it is of mass 2m. There is one force right here, which is t1. There is another force right here, which is 600. And no matter what, there are no other forces. So we're going to leave it here. And no matter what, you should understand, because everything is moving at the same acceleration, which means this must also be accelerating at the same value what we have for others. Is it clear? OK. So that would mean that, again, I have to use f equals to ma. And when I do that, now the resultant force will be t1, which is on the right, minus 600 equals to mass is 2 times 500, which is 2m, times the acceleration will be 0 0.40. That is for this uh, every, everything. Now, so when I try to find this out, this should come out as 1,000 newtons. And you guys can check as well, please. OK. Now, interesting thing. The interesting thing is that the body that we cut it from, like not physically, we're just assuming we cut it, was actually connected to this like this, right? So there was another body in front of it. And I claim that if this is like T1, then the force which is like opposing it is also T1. Why? The reason is that these two forces are same because of Newton's third law. And if you remember Newton's third law, Newton's third law states that every action on body A by body B has an equal and opposite reaction on body B by body A. So basically, if this object, like if the mass 2m is pulling 4m with 1000 newtons, then obviously uh, 4 meter, like 4m is also going to pull the mass 2m with the same amount of force in the opposite direction. Is that clear, everyone? Okay, so you should remember that. Now, in the next one, we can say, okay, th this is like cable 2, so it has tension 2. Let's call this, and obviously the action reaction, so the forces are same. In this one, let's call this tension three. Let's call this tension three. So the next body, if I want to find tension two, I want to cut it from here, and now I can use the other um, body. So for the other one, this was the body, and that body was of I think four m, right? Four m had one of the forces here, which was tension one. It had one force here, which was uh, 700 newtons. You can look at your PDF as well. And one force is this one, which is tension two, that is right here, OK? Now, so the next thing, obviously, logical thing is that we want to basically uh, use F equals to MA again. The force in this will be T2 minus t1 minus 700 with there to the left it is four times mass was 500 and obviously acceleration is going to be the same and the reason is that like the previous body it is also going with the same acceleration as of the system so which means now we can fill in the values we want t2 t1 we already found as 1000 this is 700 this is going to be uh, four times 500, 2000, whatever. And then if you try to find this out, this should come out as, I think, I believe it should come out as 2500 newtons. Like that. Okay. All right. So Ayan and, uh, oh my God, where's my other phone? That's not fair. Wait a second, please. I lost, oh, oh yeah. So, 
Okay. So, uh, Ayan and Ahmed and Javeri and Khatija, do you guys understand this? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. And who else? Okay. Speaking of that, then for the third body, we are going to basically cut it from right here. And if we cut it from here, then obviously we can take this whole body, right? And the force is long. So if I do that, then let's do it here okay? because I, I'm a bit short of space. So that body looks like this. It's basically 5M. The forces on it are T2, T3, T2, and 800. So you got T3 on this side, T2 on this side, and 800 on this side. And obviously, the acceleration has to be the same. That is for everybody that we found initially. And now let's try to find the value. So F is going to be T3 minus T2 minus 800 equals to 5 times 500 times 0 0.40. T3 is what we need to find. T2 was 2,500. It is 800. 5 times 500 times 0 0.40. When you find this, it is going to be equal to 4,300 newtons. Okay. All right, now, so it means that basically both these forces have the same value, like 4,300, 4,300. You could have also used the engine itself. That would give you the same answer. So it would, you know, uh, it's it doesn't matter. So you can start from left to right. It's all right. Okay. All right. So then, Aman. Do you understand? Laiba, Mamin, Ali, Munim, Naim, Sayyid, Hamad, Yaya. Yes, yes. Okay. Now, obviously, this is the most difficult question that can ever come to you. Uh, so that's why I did it. But generally, the questions from this part are particularly easy if you follow the same rules that I have told you to. So if you copied it, I want to go to the next slide. Okay. Now, this is a sort of question that basically has the same concept as we have done already, but much easier than that. The thing is that in this one, they are pushing like two boxes, X and Y. And these blocks, basically, they have different masses. As you can see, they say X has a greater mass than Y. And then you want to, uh, you want to basically see which statement is correct, right? So the first statement is that the acceleration of x is equal to acceleration uh, of x is equal to force divided by the mass of x. So we don't know about that, right? And force is force x exert in, uh, exerts in y is equal to f. We don't know that. Force x exerts on y is less than f. I don't know. And the force that x on y is less than the force y exerts on x. Well. That is absolutely wrong. Now, so why did I cancel this? Because this negates uh, Newton's 
third law. So that's why this could not be the answer, right? But to truly know which is the answer, we have to follow the same steps that we have followed, right? So for this particular question, I'm going to assume, all right? I'm just going to assume. I'm going to say, if this has a mass m, this has a mass 2m. So I'm just assuming, all right? Because they say one has greater mass than y, it doesn't really matter. Now, Then, in the first step, like I said, you got to find the total acceleration. So we're going to use F equals to MA. The only force that is available to us is F. The total mass would be then 2M plus M, and acceleration is going to be A. So we're going to get 3M times A. Is that clear, everyone? So the acceleration of the whole system will be equal to F over 3M. And when we were to write that the, both bodies are going to accelerate with these forces. Uh, this, I mean, value. Okay. The next step is that you cut it off. So where to cut it off? You can cut it right from here and then draw the forces. Now we need to understand when it is going to be pushed x will apply a force on y let's call this fx and y will apply a force on basically x let's call this fy because they're action and reaction basically these are the same forces we just need to find them so if i cut it off then what i'm gonna, gonna get is i'm gonna get this box which is basically x and on x i have two forces i have one force is f the other force is the force that comes from y and the mass of this is i have assumed it to be 2m doesn't really matter and obviously i should understand that acceleration has to be the same which means f over 3m has to be the acceleration of both the bodies we're going to take it like this now we're going to apply f equals to ma again and for that now f will be f times Fy equals to the mass of this body is 2m and the acceleration value is f over 3m. Now, by doing this, what you guys need to understand is that this mass and this mass cancels out. So f minus fy becomes 2 by 3f, like that. Okay. So which means if I take it here and I take that there, so it's going to be f minus 2 by 3 f equals 2 f y now if you try to find this obviously like if you divide like 1 minus uh, 2 by 3 so it's going to give you 1 by 3 f so basically f y is 1 by 3 one third of the force that that is being exerted on the whole system do you guys understand this Now, so speaking of this, then we understand that obviously this force, this force has to be the greatest force and these forces F y and F x are going to be smaller than that. So it means that it says the force that X exerts on Y is equal to F. That is absolutely wrong because the forces that are being exerted are smaller than f. Then the force that exerts x on y is less than f. That is 100% correct because these forces are basically f is much greater than fy or fx in that matter of fact. The reason why I have left a I just wanted to explain this to you because you see it says the acceleration of x is equal to force divided by the mass of x if that was the case the acceleration would have come out as f over 2m but our acceleration is f over 3m which makes this as a wrong answer as well do you guys understand this yes sir is this is this uh, question in the other sheet? Yeah, it is. It is in the other sheet. You should open it, please. 
all right now considering the fact that they can also ask you if we have found fy why why can't we find fx and we can prove that it is equal to fy we can do that right so we can basically when we cut it off the other part is this and we can draw that and if i draw the the other part like which is y so we can say the mass is m obviously there is only one force which is fx and uh, the acceleration of this is f over 3m so i'm just proving that uh, we are obeying newton's first law newton's third law all right this is something extra i want to tell you so again i'm going to use f equals to ma there's only one force which is fx the mass of this object is m and acceleration is f over 3m and obviously if you look at this m and m is going to cancel out and fx will be f 1 by 3 of f that's what is left which is exactly the same value which is fy and that's how we know that actually whenever two bodies exert forces on each other whatever one body acts the other body basically reacts with the same value but in the opposite direction is that clear everyone All right. Okay, Aman, Amna, and Ayan, Dark Legend. Do you understand? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Then Javeria, Fatija, Laiba, Ali, Munib, Ryan, Swed. Yes, sir. Mar. Yes, sir. Yaya, Zahan. Okay. Should I go forward now? Yes, sir. Okay, that's very good. Now, the next sort of questions, which are basically more than these sort of questions, are the pulley systems, right? And fortunately, I have I have to add. I should have added a page here, but I haven't. That's a cool. So I'm going to add a page. Sir, right there here. is something wrong with them. What? Your voice has changed. Yeah, the sound My has voice changed. has changed? My sound yeah, has changed? Cracking. Yeah, it is, it is cracking. Okay, wait. Wait a second. Let me switch the internet. Sometimes it gives me a lot of trouble. Don't worry. It will be fine. Die. Okay, is it okay now? Yes, yeah, sir. It's right. fine. Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, cool. So then, I'm gonna ch charge my uh, uh, my phone. Basically, it's gonna die, and we're using its hotspot. That's not good. Okay, now let's go forward. So then we um, have a similar system and basically that is the system of pulleys all right and in these sort of questions where pulleys come you don't have to worry about it too much because pulleys are like super easy so the first uh you know way they're going to give you pulleys is that they're going to give you a pulley and then they're going to show you that there are basically two masses are connected over like a pulley like this now this kind of system so let's call this m1 Let's call this M2. So this is case one. Let's call in police. In this case, I just want to tell you that the weight of this pulley, which is going to be W1, and that's going to be M1 and G, and the weight of this pulley, which is going to be W2, which is M2 and G, 
you just need to remember that these two forces although look to be directed in the same direction but in reality they are opposite to each other and the reason why i say this because if you remove the pulley right if you remove the pulley and you stretch them the way they are stretching them right now so if you flatten them that would be the right word so actually these two are against each other so this force is w1 and this one is w2 and basically the pulley was in the middle and they were hanging that's why you might feel that they're in the same direction but they're not in the same direction they're basically opposite to each other would you guys remember this Okay. The second thing. Um, sir, could you explain that again, please? Yes. So what I'm saying is that in this sort of question, Ayan, you might see that actually this part seems like it's going down, right? Also, this part seems like it's going down. Do you understand this? Yes. Seems like they're actually going down together but that's not the case because over the pulley if you just remove this section right so what you're going to get is this section of the pulley is basically like against each other so if one is pulling this with w to force the other one is pulling it in the opposite direction right it's just that we have put a pulley right here so they just seem that they're in the same direction but they're not in the same direction you have to take them as opposite forces do you understand um yes sir. so always take them as opposite forces this is what i wanted to tell you okay the other case would be when they give you the pulley over a table so in that case, there is a pulley like this, and maybe one mass is like this. The other mass is like hanging here. And you just need to remember that then, if this is the force, which is W1, so you just need to remember that this object, let's call this M1, let's call this M2, this W1 is going to be the same as the tension T in this string because now this W1 is basically pulling it right here. So in this case, the weight of hanging mass will be equal to the pulling force. In this case, I'm calling that as tension T for the other mass. Will you guys remember this? Yeah. Sorry, I get it, but what is my other mass? By, yeah, it's uh, other mass M2 in this case, right? Is it clear? So M2 multiplied by tension will give you the... Uh... No, we're not multiplying it. It's just the force, one of the forces that acting on M2, which is equal to W1. Is that clear? Yes. Yeah. One of the variations of this type of question is when they're going to give you it on a slope. Okay. So do not worry. All the slope rules that I've taught you before applies. There's a pulley. Let me make it a box because then you will be confused. 
so if this is like being pulled over pulley again all the slope rules apply and everything else so this is like w1 so whatever the tension here is that is also equal to this w1 do you guys understand this so just like this so there are two variations of this and they may might uh, give you in the questions okay that we're going to see just now all right that's pretty cool so today where is the other khatija where is khatija khan okay i will Okay, so now let's look at a question like this. Now, this is a standard pulley question that we've just discussed. And in this question, it says diagram shows a barrel on a frictionless pulley. Most of you might have seen it already. And it says a, sta a man stands close to the stick. The bottom of the barrel is 18 meters above man's head. The mass of the barrel is 120 kg and the mass of the man is 80 kg. Okay. Now the man keeps holding the rope after untying it from the stick and is lifted upwards as the barrel falls, which means that when this is the weight of the barrel, let's call this W2 and the weight of the man, let's call this W1 and the man will be lifted because of this. Now it says, what is the man's upward speed when his head is level with the bottom of the barrel. Okay, so see how I solve this. What they're saying is that when the man is being pulled, so in the actual paper, they've given this much space for it to, for you guys to work. So this is the pulley and they're saying when the stick, when the barrel, okay, when the barrel and the man are exactly at the same point. Oh no, I think the pulley got a bit weird. Okay, so when they're exactly at the same point, you got to find what is the upward speed of the man. So this is the question, and that's the ground from which the man has been lifted. And obviously, they have given that this whole, like the distance, this whole distance is equal to 18 meters. Is that clear, everyone? That's what they say. Now, so if they meet somewhere, which means that they're going to meet exactly at the middle, which means the man will go up by nine meters, that's a halfway, and the barrel will come down from the top for nine meters. And that's when they're going to be equal. Do you guys understand that? Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So now how to solve this? We all know that this is a question of pure kinematics because we need to find the speed. And obviously he's going to accelerate upwards because the barrel is pulling him. So it means we need S, U, V, A and T for this question. So displacement we have already figured out, it is 9.0 meters. Initial velocity will be zero because he was standing. The final velocity is what we need. We do not have the acceleration. We do not have the time. But for SUVAD equations, we must have the acceleration. So which means we also need to pull out our arsenal of the knowledge of forces. So let's do that. So first of all, we should understand that whenever two bodies are connected by a single string, we got to find the step one is always to find the acceleration. And how, we, how do we do that? So we're going to use F equals to MA and then we're going to see what forces are there. So the force here, barrel force is W1. Let's call this W2. 
and the man weight is W1, let's call that. So the resultant force will be W2 minus W1 equals to the mass of both objects connected by the string. So the mass of the barrel was 120, the mass of the man was 80. So we're going to do 120 plus 80 and then acceleration. So how do we find the weight? It is pretty easy. Barrel weight mass was 120 multiplied by 9.81 would find us its weight minus 80 times 9.81 would be the weight of the man. This is going to be 200. This is going to be A. And now we're going to basically simply use the calculator to find it. So it's going to be 120 times 9.81. Sir, it says uh, G to use as 10, not 900. We need to use, uh oh, okay. That makes us, you know, happier. So let's do that. No problem. So we're going to use this. Thank you, examiner. 120 times 10 minus 80 times 10. This is going to be 400. This is going to be 200. And then acceleration should be, I think, 2. But I'm still going to solve it. I'm bad in my math. So this is going to be our acceleration that we desperately needed right here. Now, if we do not have time, who can tell me which equation should I use to find this final speed? Please. 2as is equal to v square minus u square. Yes, 2as equals to v square minus u square. You guys should now must have that on your fingertips. 9. This is going to be v squared minus 0 squared. And now let's try and find this. 2 times 2 times 9. And under root. Where is under root? Okay, answer. So V comes out to be 6 meters per second, which is answer A. Okay, is that clear, everyone? Any questions? All right. Okay, very nice. Okay, write it down, please. And see, Yaya, you're understanding everything, Hamad, Ryan, Munim. Yes. Okay. Sir? Yes. Sir, can you explain why we don't take displacement as 18 and 9? Why we take it as 9? Because 18 was when the man was standing right at the bottom and the barrel was on the top. Do you understand? So it says you need to find the speed when man head is level with the bottom of barrel and that is only possible when they do meet and they would meet at the middle that would always happen do you understand okay which means the man has to go nine meters up and the barrel has to come nine meters down that's when they will meet right halfway between okay okay should i go to the next question then yes? hold on well, why do we take two times as equals to two we took 2 AS because we do not have time in, time is not given. So we have to oh, use yeah. an equation amongst three which does not have time. The other two has time, right? Okay, okay Aya. Pretty good, right? Now let's go to the next one. Now in this question, now unfortunately, a lot of questions will be mixed with um, like work power energy as well because police do have that as well so we do not have to worry about that at all we just need to be aware of you know um this that we can actually find this directly anyway now in this particular question I wanted to give you as homework. Should I give you as homework? No, I will do this. Anyway, so it says the wheel attached to the motor axle of uh, circumference 0 0.5 meters and the belt which passes over it is stationary when the weights have shown. So belt is stationary. Okay. If the wheel is making 20 revolutions per second, what is the output power of the motor? All right. Now, if you look at the whole system, right, you might realize that 
obviously the weight on this side the force on this side is larger than the force on this side and the resultant force that we have here has to be 50 minus 20 and 30 newtons okay now if they say because of the motor being motor revolving this system is stationary so where would the motor applying the force to keep the balance between the both ends what do you guys say on the right side maybe on the right obviously on the right side so it means that on the right side the motor must apply a force of 30 newtons you agree yeah. all right so now we know that force from motor is 30 newtons and those who do not know it's all right but obviously when we we'll, uh, go to the work power energy you'll know power is also given by force times velocity so right now our issue is that we need to find the power but we do not have the velocity of the motor but we do have the circumference and we also know the revolutions so revolutions is that how many times the motor is rotating per second all right is that clear now velocity is you do agree that it's distance over time right do you guys agree yeah so in one revolution what would be the distance in one revolution the distance would be equal to the circumference don't you think so right so in 20 revolutions which happen in one second it must have basically gone over over and over again 10 times so it should have gone 10 meters and that would be the distance in one second the speed will be 10 divided by 1 10 meters per second you guys agree yeah so now put back into the for the power formula which is force which is 30 and then the speed right here is 10 so it's going to be the power of the motor must be 300 watts so this is the type of question now the second part is like you can, you will get it once we start that but the real part was that you guys should understand this section first all right and that's the aim of today's class right any questions please let me know okay okay fine then going to the next question now this is a typical question that we talked about earlier and in this question it says that a box of mass 8 kg rest on rough surface and obviously 2 kg is being like it's pulling it down so the moment you should see you should understand the weight of this object whatever it is let's call this w1 should be the same as the tension the pulling force that is there so weight one should be equal to tension that's that should be the first idea that co must come in your mind right now it says what is the acceleration of the box if the friction is six so obviously if it's trying to pull it this way the friction has to be in the opposite direction which is six newtons now what you're going to do is we're going to see for the whole system what's going to happen so we're going to use f equals to ma the force here is w1 which is equal to t basically a minus 6.0 you can also write t if you want to and because there are two bodies connected by a single a string so you must always add them so it's going to be 2 plus 8 times the acceleration so the weight is right now is 2 times 9.81 minus 6 2 plus 8 is 10 times 8 so now let's pull out the calculator this is a very simple question actually 2 times 9.81 uh -oh. times uh, sorry minus 6.0 okay divide by 10 and that would be acceleration will be 1.4 
meters per second square. Do we have a quick answer like that? Yes, we do. Do you guys understand this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you guys find it easy now? Will you be able to do it in the exam? Yes. I'm sure you guys will be able to. All right. Now, going to this one. All right. So this is this type of question. I just wanted to, you know, get accustomed with all type of questions that might come. So this is a slope over the pulley and blah, blah, blah. So right now we should understand this again, whatever the weight here, W1, that should be equal to the pulling force here, which is T, right? You guys agree? Okay. Yes. Then because it is a slope question, you should also work out the other forces, right? Now it's saying two masses M and M are connected by inextensible strings, which passes over frictionless pulley and rests on a frictionless slope. So there's no friction. And then it says you want to find the expression that is correct. Okay, fine. Right now, we should understand that this mass will have its weight here. Let's call this W2, which means whenever we, just, we see the pulley, the uh, first force is down, the other force is, what do we do next? What do you guys say? Yes, please. The first component of the weight is where? Up the slope or down the slope? Down the slope. Okay, so it is down the slope. And the other component is? Perpendicular to the surface. Perpendicular to the slope, like this. And this angle theta is right here, which means this is going to be W2 sine theta, and this is going to be W1 cosine theta, like that, okay? Now, obviously, we are interested in <clears throat> this line, right, this line. So we're not interested in what's happening here, but rather on that side. So right now, we could say then that if I write F equals to MA now, the force here is T, which is basically, or we can write W1, equals W1 minus W2 sine theta, because that's the opposing force. Uh, W1 and T are same, so you can write either one of them. And then the masses are M plus, oh, it's small m plus large m times like that. All right, is that clear, everyone? Sir? Yes. Sir, uh, we learned in vectors that for like uh, horizontal, we will use cos and then vertical, we will use sine. But why are you using sine for the horizontal one here, the parallel one? We never learned that, Laiba. We learned that the force which is always next to the angle has to be the cause and the force which is away from the angle has to be sine. That's the rule. Okay. Yeah. So if you have that concept in your mind, please raise that. That's absolutely wrong. Do you understand? So yes. basically the angle will always be between the original vector and the vector, one of the components. The component that has the angle touching like you see here, that component will be cause always, okay. okay? No matter what, okay, now. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna write, W1 is going to be mg, and that's gonna be mg sine theta, and this is going to be ma plus ma, like that, right? Just like that, okay. Now, the thing is, it says which expression uh, in the equation that must be correct. So the equation here that we're getting is like quite complicated, honestly, but we need to separate the sine theta from this. So I'm gonna take uh, all non-sine theta on one side. So I'm gonna get mg minus ma minus ma equals to mg 
sine theta, right? And then I'm going to divide mg on this side. So mg minus ma minus ma divided by mg equals to sine theta. And once I've done that, now I will be able to figure out uh, the answers, okay? So I just need to see which answer makes the most sense in this because this is a kind of a, you know, a difficult question. Really. So don't worry about that. Okay. So speaking of this then, all right. So if you look at the whole uh, equation, you might you might understand that it's saying what, which expression basically must be correct. So if you look, look at the sine theta value, you might realize that basically um, with the cos theta, we do not have any relationship uh, with that, but we can write it down. We can say that basically uh, W1 is basically M G cosine of theta like that. But we do not have any relationship of cos theta with this m because this only acts here. So which means all the cos values are definitely wrong. Uh, that would not be our answer. Is that clear? You guys? Yes, sir. Yeah. So that, that, that would be absolutely wrong. Now going to whether A is correct or M is correct, I just want to tell you something very important here. If you look at the whole expression right here, you might realize that actually, even if I you know, try to take um, um, these, this would be the weight of uh, W2. So this is basically actually W2. And if you realize this, this value basically comes out to be somewhat like a much, much smaller uh, value in terms of um, what you say, uh, because mg is already a small mass, which is being subtracted by ma and ma, which is the large mass, right? So it means the upper value is going to be smaller than this. So that is one of the issues that we need to understand. All right, is that clear? No. So the technique to, uh, in thinking that, okay, so what do, what do I have to do to understand that this sine theta has to be, uh, you know, or this sine theta is smaller or greater than M or M, that would be only when you should understand that obviously this mass is bigger, so it would take it down, the acceleration will be down. And because the value, whatever the value is, whatever the value is, it is basically like it's saying mg, like mg, if you take the ratio of, wait a second, mg over mg, which is the ratio of weights, this is going to give us basically m over m. That has to be bigger or smaller than that. In my particular understanding, because the reason is, that even if we suppose the values and we say, okay, G is 9.81 and there was some acceleration which was, you know, causing them to move, whatever that acceleration might be, we should understand that the sine theta value, sine theta value is the force that's basically causing it to go down, right? Which means that no matter what, these two will always be like, this expression will always be bigger than the tension that is causing by this one which means that the sine theta has to be greater than these two at all times. All right, this should, this is just a simple understanding of how it is done. Now, again, I'm gonna explain this a different way so that you guys understand this. If you look at this expression, what they're actually trying to tell you is that M sine theta is greater than M, which is Mg, if I basically find the weight, mg sine theta is greater than um, mg. And that is true because my friends, if this is, isn't true, then how is it possible that it is being pulled down when we have this force as mg sine theta and this force as 
uh, just mg. So obviously, if it pulls it down, which means that this force must be greater than this force. Do you guys understand this? Like that. OK, let me, uh, if you do not understand this, can I explain it again, please? So yes, everyone. Okay, again, I'm going to make it a little bit easier for you people so that, oh no, okay, refuses to you. All right, let me just explain it just one more time so it's much more easier. I just did the expression so in, in the question, if you know, in the exam, big actual values, how to find that. So this force was weight, this was one component down, one component perpendicular. This was like, let's call this mg, okay? This was mg sine theta. This was mg cosine theta. And this force was mg, which is also the same force as here, which is basically pulling it. Now, we are just looking at this section only. So which means I cut these two because they are nothing really because cause has nothing to do with a small m and g. Now, if you look at this line, you must understand that mg sine theta minus mg should give you some resultant force, some resultant force, which means that no matter what this value mg sine theta must be greater than mg in order to produce this resultant value. Do you guys understand this? All right. Now, g and g cancels out. So we get m sine theta equals to m. So sine theta is going to be m over m. And that is why this is the answer. Do you guys understand this? Yes, please. Okay, so uh, Aman, Amna, Ayan, Jawaria, everything is clear? Yes, sir. And Khatija and Root today, do you understand? Okay, and Laiba, Munim, Ryan, Hamad, Yaya. Yes, sir, Mahan. clear. Okay, very good. Okay, yes, sir, so, it's clear. All right. So I hope that now you have the understanding of how